Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Students, today here I am again with another video pressure analysis where we will be solving some six formulas. The formulas are you can see here at the rim working capital, capital employed, current ratio, asset test ratio, debt equity ratio, and asset proprietorship ratio. These six formulas we have to solve using the details given below. You see one balance sheet is given to us liabilities, amount, assets, and amount. Here the details equity share, preference share, reserve and surplus, debenture, then uh, current liability is given. There is overdraft, sundry creditor, proposed dividend, provision for taxation, fixed asset is given, under current asset you see stores, stock, debtors, cash in hand, cash in bank, preliminary expenses, discount on issue of share. Now, I want to tell you something that these two assets are known as fictitious assets and these two has got some good importance in this solution. Okay, Take a look properly when I will be solving this sum. Now, if you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get the notification of my videos whenever I upload them in my channel. Anyways, let us start the solution. So, as per the formula, the first thing that we need to find out is working capital. Okay, you can see a working capital. Now, the formula for working capital is very simple. It is current assets minus current liabilities. Take a look. I have done here. Number one, working capital. The formula for working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. It means from this question, you have to find out your current assets and from here you have to find out your current liabilities. Now you see the heading is already given here current asset. That means one, two, three, four, five. These five items are your current assets and here under current liabilities, one, two, three, four. These four items are your current liabilities. So now what you will do is you can write the name one by one or else what since they have categorized clearly current asset and current liabilities, we can add up the amount 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So if we add up this amount, the total amount that is coming up here 60,000. Okay, minus current liabilities. If you add up this 1, 2, 3 and 4, this 4 amount, you are going to get how much? 40,000. So if you separate the two, you'll get 20,000. So that is the answer for working capital. So keep in mind, student, the most important point here is working capital's formula. That is current asset minus current liabilities. Okay, now we'll solve the next formula. So here you can see number two, capital employed. Now, to find capital employed, there are various formulas. So here the formula that you're using is total asset or total liability you can take any one okay total asset or total liability anything you can take minus current liabilities this is the very common formula and then since in this question you have fictitious assets keep in mind if fictitious assets was not there in this question then the formula for solving capital employed would have been total asset minus current liability or total liability minus current liability clear but since you have fictitious assets, fictitious assets are to be subtracted from total asset in order to find out capital employed. So the formula that you're using is total assets minus current liability minus fictitious assets. In short, fictitious assets should not come under capital employed. As a result, we are doing the subtraction of that. Okay. Now total asset, you can see from the question, total of SSIDs 292. Triple zero. So that's what I wrote here. Two nine two triple zero minus current liability. Current liability was this four entries. If you add up this four amount, you will get forty thousand. I wrote here forty thousand minus fictitious assets. So fictitious assets are preliminary expenses and discount on issue of debenture. So total of this two will be fifty two thousand. That's what I wrote here. Okay, and then by solving this, how much you'll get two lakhs. So in that way, capital employed is done. Now, number three, current ratio. Current ratio is a very simple ratio. The formula for a current ratio is current asset divided by current liabilities. Okay, so we can easily find out these two from the question. You can, you can see here, these are your current assets. So add up this amount, total will be 60,000. So I wrote here 60,000. And current liabilities, total of this four amount, one, two, three, four. If you add, you will get 40,000. So 40,000. If you divide these two, you will get 1.5 is to 1. Okay. So that is the formula for current ratio. It's a very simple ratio. Clear. Let's move on to the next ratio. Number four, acid test ratio. Now the formula for acid test ratio is equal to 
liquid assets divided by current liability now liquid asset means you are not going to include stock you are not going to include prepaid i will repeat once more stock and prepaid will not be included in liquid asset okay so liquid asset equal to i will show you from the question what i wrote here see stores and stock they are same because in stores you are keeping the stocks only right so this two will not be included you will just take into account these three entries debtor cash in hand and cash at bank these three entries will come in your liquid asset so that's what i wrote here you see sundry debtor plus cash in hand plus cash at bank and then i wrote their respective amount sundry debtor is 10000 i wrote 10000 cash in hand 2000 i wrote 2000 then 4000 i wrote 4000 by adding up this four amount you will be getting how much 16000 and current liability we already know we have done in the previous formulas see you can see here 40000 so therefore asset test ratio equal to current asset value sorry liquid asset value i wrote here 16000 divided by 40 so by dividing this you will get 0.4 is to 1 okay so in that way you will be solving your asset test ratio Now let us move to the next ratio. A very important one, debt equity ratio. The formula for this is long term debt divided by shareholders fund. Now long term debt basically it's linked to debenture and long term loans and long term provisions. If you have those things in your question, that will come under long term debt. And shareholders fund basically deals with share capital, reserve and surpluses. Okay, so you can easily identify these two from the question. So we have to look in the question first. Long term debt. Now long term debt. You see here is here they have given only one item which belongs to long term debt. That is fifteen percent debenture. The amount for that is forty eight thousand. So I wrote here directly forty eight thousand. Okay, you can see here I wrote here forty eight thousand. Now next is shareholders fund. Now shareholders fund. I'll show you here. Look carefully. Equity share capital, twelve percent preference share capital, and reserve and surplus. These three belongs to shareholders fund. So you have to add these three amount. Okay, one lakh fifty plus thirty thousand plus twenty four thousand. But you will have to subtract fictitious assets also. Okay, I will just show you. I wrote here. You see, shareholders fund equal to. One lakh fifty thousand plus thirty thousand plus twenty four thousand. This three amount belongs to. Take a look here. Equity share capital, preference share capital, reserve and surplus. Okay. Now, since we have fictitious assets, that has to be subtracted. So, fictitious assets are preliminary expenses, discount on issue of debentures. So, if you add this to how much you'll get fifty two thousand. So that has to be subtracted from shareholders fund. You see, I wrote here. I have added the three amount minus forty eight thousand and minus four thousand. So by doing that, the total amount of shareholders fund is one lakh fifty two thousand. So that is what I wrote here. And after dividing, how much I how much I got here? Zero point three two is to one. So that's how shareholder uh, debt equity ratio is solved. Be careful in shareholders fund. Okay, if fictitious asset was not there in the question, then we would have just added this three. But since we have fictitious assets, it has to be subtracted. Clear? Now the last ratio: assets proprietorship ratio. The formula for this is shareholders fund divided by total assets. Now this and this both the things we have already solved earlier. Shareholders fund we have taken out just now one lakh fifty thousand. I wrote here same. A total asset. Now, in this total asset, you should not include fictitious assets. A little bit once more. In total asset, you will not include fictitious assets. You can take a look here. There also, what you have done, you have taken total asset. So, what you have deducted here, fictitious assets. So, be careful. Whenever there are fictitious assets, while solving the sum of ratio in total asset, you should not include fictitious assets. Wherever total asset is used. Just deduct the amount of fictitious assets. Okay, the same thing we have done here. You can take a look. Total value of the asset was two lakh ninety two thousand. Now from this you will subtract fifty two thousand. That is forty eight thousand plus four thousand of these two fictitious assets. So if you subtract fifty two thousand from two lakh ninety two thousand, how much you are going to get here? Two lakh forty. So if you divide these two, you will get zero point six three is to one. So in that way. asset proprietorship ratio is completed 
so students i hope you understood whatever i told you here if you may doubt any queries please do ask me in your comment box thank you so much for watching the video